May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sean always asks me for a uh, title for my sermon. And uh, I was thinking about it um, yesterday when I was writing my sermon. And I thought to myself, the title of it will be, I am not away with the fairies. Now, some of you might dispute that fact. Um, I've, I'm of that conclusion. But that is my title. The way things are given to us in the Bible are sometimes a little bit hard to believe. And ascension is one of those times, really. Uh, one of those things in the Bible which is a little bit difficult, especially for someone like me of a more scientific bent, I suppose you might say. Nine-year-old Joey was asked by his mother what he had learned at Sunday school. Well, Mum, our teacher told us how God sent Moses behind enemy lines on a rescue mission to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. When he got to the Red Sea, he had his engineers build a pontoon bridge and all the people walked safely across. Then he used his walkie-talkie and got hold of headquarters for reinforcements. And they sent bombers to blow up the bridge, and all the Israelites were saved. Now, said his mum, Joey, is that really what the teacher taught you? Well, no, mum. But if I told you the way the teacher said, you'd never believe it. <laughs> and sometimes things do seem a little bit hard to believe the way they are written in the Bible. I love fairy stories, actually. I do actually like fairy stories. I've always been quite intrigued by those lovely Victorian pictures of fairies as well that you get in some books. And uh, I have to admit, I've never actually seen fairies at the bottom of the garden. You might remember the story of Cottingley, the Cottingley fairies. If you're, if you're up north uh, where Father Andrew comes from, I don't know whether he's watching on the telly today or not, but um, it's up where he came from, really. And two teenage girls there, I think they were, um, forged these pictures of fairies at the bottom of their garden and uh, it fooled a lot of people at the time it really did uh, at the time when we hadn't got all these gadgets on computers where you could uh, alter photographs and all that sort of thing and um, Conan Doyle you know who wrote Sherlock Holmes and all this sort of thing he was really taken in by this he wanted to believe in um, fairies and, and things like that, and, and the spiritual afterlife and things. So he was really taken in. But I believe the Bible, I do really believe the Bible in so many ways. But we do have to interpret it through faith. The story of Jesus, we know the end of the story we have it all written down for us, even if sometimes it does seem a little bit hard to believe. We have, over this Easter season, learned about the arrests of Jesus and then his cruel execution by the Romans at the behest of the Jewish authorities. That part is believable because we know the cruelty of the Romans and we understand 
the human nature that leads people like the high priests to do awful things to defend their authority. We see such things today in many of the sort of not very good regimes in the world. We see uh, dictators who rule with great authority. The thing about dictators is they don't have friends. They have hangers-on. Because it's far too dangerous to be a friend of a dictator. If you read uh, biographies of uh, people like Stalin, you'll know that nearly everybody who was close to him ended up, uh, well, they disappeared, um, shall we say. Um, and that was the way it was. And that was the way it was in the time of Jesus, really. You had to be close, I suppose, to the high priest in that, but not too close. And you didn't in any way challenge their authority. Then we have the resurrection, which is hard to believe. And sometimes, when I was a youth, I know for quite a while I found it very difficult. But we do have the testimony of so many witnesses. And when it comes to fully understand Jesus' mission, we come to feel the reality of God, the reality of God to raise Jesus. Then we come to the ascension, which in the biblical accounts we hear of Jesus being raised, body and soul, into heaven. In Luke, this occurs on the day of the resurrection. But in Acts, it is 40 days after the resurrection. And as these were written by the same person, these accounts are a bit perplexing uh, to scholars. And also we now live in a scientific world where the ancient view of the cosmos, you know, there was a big dome, and that God was over the other side of the dome, is not really relevant anymore. Now we've sent people to the moon and we've sent space rockets you know around the planets and things like that and we have the uh, web telescope now that can look back billions of years so those things are a little bit difficult I must admit when I was young I, I did sort of slightly think that Jesus was like an astronaut and was suddenly jet packed up into heaven and then I came to realize that it wasn't quite like that and if we read the accounts we he disappeared actually into the clouds or wherever and they saw him no more when the disciples began to understand what Jesus had been saying to them about his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and the ascension, they realized that God had glorified him, and they were to await the Holy Spirit, which would empower them to be Christ in the world. Looking around our congregation today, here, I expect virtually everyone here has experienced bereavement. And I am with you there. It hurts. There is a real sense of loss. And when I still take funerals, I do like to emphasize to families that there is no formula for grief and grieving. It affects everybody differently because we are all different and our bereavement is singular 
it's our bereavement. Those first disciples must have been devastated to see Jesus die. But then started to realize what Jesus had done for them and the whole world. They grieved, but they gave thanks to God for what Jesus did. He was no longer with them, but they remembered that Jesus had promised he would send the Spirit to be with them forevermore. We are in the church's calendar at this point where we are awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, which we will celebrate next week at Pentecost. Many people find it very hard to move on following bereavement. But I'm never critical of them because I feel they have the right to grieve. But I would ask all grievers to remember those first disciples and their joy that they knew when Jesus came back to them their confusion until they understood what was happening and their acceptance that Jesus, leaving them to return to God at the ascension, that meant that they would receive the Holy Spirit. We have received the Holy Spirit at our baptism and therefore are inheritors of the kingdom of God. God loved us so much that he gave his life for us that we might join him in that kingdom. These 10 days or so in this period between Ascension and Pentecost are the time when we reflect on the kingdom. And uh, although I wasn't here the last week, I know that Mary very much promoted thinking of thy kingdom come. I hope you took a booklet and are looking through this, even if every day you don't do it or something. Read the things in it. If you didn't get one last week, I think there are probably some more left. Um, do, do have one. Reflect on the kingdom of God because Jesus was glorified because of the glorification of Jesus we have the kingdom and the kingdom is where we will go all of us have but a short time to live and um, some of us are getting a bit nearer that kingdom than others. Um, but we are all destined for the kingdom of God. So please do think about the kingdom in these days until Pentecost. Do take a book. I'm sure there'll be some left at the back there somewhere. Yes, we have got some. Yes, lovely. Anne's got them there for you. So do take one afterwards. And remember that sometimes, although the Bible is difficult to understand, and sometimes it does seem a little bit, you know, fairy tale ish at times, there are truths in everything there that we should understand. And as the joke between Sue and myself would go, I would say, that's fair enough. Amen.